Hi all, Namrata here and you are watching Similin Tutorial and in today's video we are going to discuss MBD interview questions part 2. I hope the last video was helpful to you guys and informative. So let's start with today's video. So the first question is why do we need subsystem and the difference between virtual and non-virtual subsystem. So to discuss that I'll just load this model. So the first part, why do we need a subsystem? So imagine what will happen if you put all blocks in your component or SWC on one level. It will be very chaotic and you won't understand a bit of it what is happening exactly. To avoid that and to make your model look more simplified and sometimes due to design requirements we have to use subsystem so two reasons design requirements and to make your model look more simplified now the second part what is virtual and non-virtual subsystem so if you look at these two subsystem they are virtual subsystem so what is virtual subsystem it is just for graphical representation so the way i explained earlier to make your model look more simplified so you can group blocks which are working on specific requirements and put that logic inside one subsystem so let's just say i have a model which requires input signal conditioning the core logic and output signal conditioning so in this case i'll have three subsystem main three subsystems one for input conditioning second for core logic and the third one for output conditioning so the core logic can have multiple subsystems inside it based on the requirement so instead of putting all blocks on one level we prefer to use different subsystems and group the blocks to make the model look more simplified so that is why we need virtual subsystem so the virtual subsystem it does not really have any impact on execution order of all the blocks even if you use it or don't use it the execution order of blocks will remain same so to demonstrate that we we'll just go to display blocks and the sorted execution order so if you check this option you can see the execution order of all blocks when you simulate the model so now you can see that the blocks are updated with execution order so this is level 0 that is why this 0 is the level and the 3 for this unit delay block is the execution order so I'll just go to this subsystem 1 so if we look at this the unit delay block will execute first okay so it has zeroth order then will this input be the second order well let's check so i'll go to this subsystem and that input means the updated value of addition block well it is not the second one because this addition needs to be updated to complete the execution of the subsystem one as well so zeroth order for unit delay block in the other subsystem then one for this unit delay block then two for this constant block and this third one is the input which is the output of this unit block so 3 then the addition will be updated so 4 and that addition will be used here and then this addition block which is 5 and then this output port which will be updated with final output value so it is 6 so let's just see what happens if I expand this subsystem expand subsystem okay and now i'll simulate this again so 0 1 2 3 
four, five, six. So the execution order remains the same. Let's just delete this. Delete, simulate. And again, the execution order remains the same. So even if you put blocks in virtual subsystem or don't, the execution order for blocks will remain same. So this is just for graphical representation to make model look more simplified. So now let's see what is non-virtual subsystem. So the other name for this subsystem is atomic subsystem. So to make it atomic, we have to check this option that it is treat as atomic unit. block parameters treat as atomic unit so non-virtual subsystem so you can see the difference between virtual and non-virtual subsystem appearance wise so this one has dark bold border okay and from execution point of view the difference is that this subsystem it treats all logic inside it as one single entity so it will be a different level for blocks inside this subsystem so if i simulate this one now you can see that the subsystem itself has its execution order so the unit delay block it was earlier three but now it is zero now this subsystem execution order is one and this subsystem execution order is two and the output order is three if we go inside subsystem one we can see that it is not zero colon something but it is one colon something so it is the execution order of the parent so for this blocks the parent is this subsystem so its execution order is 1, so 1 colon 0, 1 colon 1, 1 colon 2. Similarly for this one it should be 2 colon 0 and 1. So each subsystem is treated as separate entity and when you execute it, once the execution enters a particular non-virtual subsystem, it executes all blocks inside it and then exits it. And also with non-virtual subsystem, you get to choose the type of function packaging you want to use for code generation, which does not come with virtual subsystem. So you can have a separate function for this subsystem while generating a code. So to learn more about function packaging, you can check out my previous video on function packaging. I'll also provide the link of that video in the description below. So that's the difference between virtual and non-virtual subsystem and how it affects execution order of blocks. So the second question is design a counter. It is to test your design skills so how do you design a counter so if you look at the basic of counter it's just an addition with previous updated value so this is the most basic and simplified counter which is free running so there is no maximum limit for this counter so you will keep adding one to previous output now the interviewer may ask to put a limit and once it reaches to its max value you have to reset the counter so how to do that so relational operator this is greater than so if the updated addition let's say maximum value is 5 greater than 5 then just want to use simple if else with the help of switch block it is not equal to zero so when this condition is true i want output equal to zero else i want previously updated value and now this unit delay block will come here it will be here this will go away 
and your new updated value will be here so this was just the basic how you can enhance it it depends on you what blocks you want to use so the question will not be just design a counter so it can come up with added conditions as well like the maximum value or the up counter as well as down counter so that was with using simulink and if you want to implement it using straight diagram then you have these three main options which is simple up counter so in a straight your initial account will be zero then keep on adding one in it and also to check the max limit you put one condition so if the count is greater than or equal to the max value you again re-enter so when you re-enter it will again start from entry that is count zero simple down counter which is same as up counter just the difference it subtraction and the condition is whether it has reached to its minimum limit the third one is up down counter so by default you will enter up count when it reaches its max you go to down count when the down count value reaches its minimum value you again go to up count so this is how you can implement up or down counter using straight diagram so there are two more ways to implement timer or counter logic using chart and that is with the help of temporal counter so there are two types of temporal counter which is implicit tick event and the other one is absolute one so to know more about temporal logic you can check out my previous video i'll provide link of that video as well in the description below so it completely depends on an individual how you want to implement the counter whether to use simulink or whether to use chart in a more simplified manner and i hope these videos are helpful to you to prepare for interviews i'll come up with new questions in the next video so that's all for this video if you like this video give it a thumbs up and keep watching and keep learning